What's going on with TNA? Did right. they have that big show in Montreal? How did that turn out? Yeah, so um, I'll bring up the news headlines now. So they, uh, so they had their big show, which is um, Slammiversary. Yeah. And some interesting decisions. So one of the things I want to talk about first is um, Jordan Grace. So before the show happened, like to hype the show, she says there's going to be loads of big surprises. And I think a lot of people thought that a big surprise would come from, say, um, NXT. Okay. But there was no surprises at all on the show. Okay. She she did come out and apologize afterwards and she blamed um travel issues because they was in Montreal. Right. And she wrote that, you know, um, because what are the um did you have it over I'm guessing you have it, had it over your end, you know, with the whole tech um outage over the what day was it? Was it Friday? Yeah, I heard about that. Uh, I didn't really notice anything on my end in my little world, uh, but I heard about there was flights delayed and all kinds of stuff going on. Yeah, I think over here there's some flights cancelled, and uh, a lot of shops where I went to, you couldn't pay by cash. Okay. So all right. pay by cash, which okay. I prefer cash. Right. So... Um, but she said, um, you know, she does. She said, she said she never said there would be surprises, but I think apparently she did. Um, so she apologized and said she could never predicted for a global tech outrage outage, uh, canceling thousands of flights. She wrote, several wrestlers, including my husband, could not make it. I regret trying to hype the show with that statement. Sorry, guys. So yeah, I'm guessing those traffic issues, obviously flight issues with the um, outage and stuff. So um, obviously someone that's been in the business for a long time. What happened? What's the general reaction from fans when they've been promised stuff and surprises and doesn't happen? Uh, How hard yeah. is it to get that um, faith back from the fans? Yeah, I mean, listen, some wrestling fans are loyal to the end. But as you know, they like to complain. I mean, look at our little podcast here. When we have a little bit of a tech issue, we can't. We don't hear the end of it, do we? Mainly my end. People's like sort your mic out, James, and the echo, and I'm like, it ain't me. <laughs> it was my. Why are you putting the heat on, James? It was me. I'm the one that's leading this goddamn train wreck. I'm the one that. Uh, but the new, well, first they were complaining that we had to upgrade the uh, the HD thing, right? Because we we're at 720, and then we brought it up to 1020 or 40. So you know that was an extra cost. So I said, okay, I'll pay for it. That comes out of my account every month. And then I bought a microphone because they were complaining about that. And then. Uh, then there's these different settings and listen i'm not a computer guy i'm i'm, I'm taking this you know what i mean so i i need all the help i can get so we fixed everything now james made the investment he got himself a new camera just a matter of time before they start complaining about something else but i mean yeah the, the, the number one rule in wrestling is when you promise something or you promote something or you advertise something you have to show up and you have to deliver that's the number one rule. So if she went out there, I'm sure she was told by administration to say that. I'm sure she didn't have free will to just go out and make promises. I'm sure that's a direct order from an administration. So, I mean, the heat goes on her from the fans because, you know, she's the one that said it on the microphone. But if you have half a brain, you'd realize that she's just doing as she's told. So... If it is because of this uh, tech issue with the f delayed flights and stuff, hey, we have no control over that. Shit mm -hmm. happens, right? So, I mean, listen, there's going to be a hardcore wrestling fan base that will forgive and forget. But there's always going to be the little annoying bastards that are going to complain and hold it over your head. And, you know what I mean? So... Yeah, it's. Uh, I think she got she got a bit of the blame because 
she's kind of one of the faces of TNA now. She's one of the like the main stars they've got. Right. So, you know, it's the equivalent of I say it's the equivalent of Cena, but it's the equivalent of, I don't know, say Bailey or Becky Lynch, for example, like on the female right. side, say right. we have surprises. Um yeah. but you know, it's not her fault. And that um Cassie Beard put in the chat, um WDB had a similar issue. Do you remember when we had all that volcanic issues, the volcano issues, the ash clouds? Yes. Yeah, but- yes. Done the episode of Raw, and I think there was like fuck man, I think it was only like Triple H and like Shame and some punk and Cena there. It well, was like a- it, it, they were stuck in Ireland, weren't they? Because of the volcanoes, the, the I whole think so, yeah, because it came from like Iceland or Finland, and right, the UK is not that far from like Iceland. I think right. it came from Iceland. Yeah, so I mean, listen, there's worldly events that you know sometimes we have no control, except in Japan. In Japan, if they have a show promoted, they're going to run it. I mean, Christ almighty. Uh, When that big tsunami happened in 2011, they had a show at the Sumo Arena, and they didn't cancel it, buddy. That's where I flew back in. Like, as I, I, I don't know, man. I'm blessed in so many different ways because two days before the tsunami, I had to come back to Canada work on my waiver because you know i was re-signed with wwf right and, 11 yeah right and i had to apply for this waiver in order to get that contract so i that's when i came back home to get all that stuff settled but when i came home about two days after is when the big tsunami happened and at six o'clock in the morning i get a phone call from my wife She's fucking freaking out. She says, turn on the TV. And then I'm seeing like my whole world just literally underwater. You know what I mean? I mean, we can't control mother nature, right? I mean, shit happens. So, uh, uh, but how overall, how was, did you catch the pay-per-view? Did you watch it? I watched some of it. So I'll give you some of the, the big things that happened. So because it was Montreal, El Hebner got brought in. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So it was the uh, X Division match between uh, Mustafa Ali, who was the current X Division champion. He was against um, Speedball Mike Bailey. Okay. And uh, uh, that's right. Ali had Bailey in the sharpshooter, and Hebner came out and uh, he refused to ring the bell. And uh, ultimately, um, Mike Bailey went on to uh, win the match. Um. Oh. What's your thoughts about, you know, um, they, they're they still, and it's not just TNA, like a few companies, they're still, you know, reliving the, the Montreal screw job. I mean, it's possibly it's the biggest story in the history of wrestling. It's up there anyway. Um, But what's your thought? Is it overplayed now? Because, fuck, man, was it like 27 years ago now? It was the biggest work in the history of wrestling. You still think it's a work? I know it was a work. You know it's a work. It was the best, one of the best done worked kayfabe angles ever because it completely changed the wrestling business. It saved Vince McMahon's company. Yeah. And, you know, listen, when, you're Bre- when your last name is Hart and you grew up in the wrestling business and your father was Stu Hart, and you relied on this business to feed your family. You eat, sleep, breathe, live, kayfabe, and listen. Uh, yeah, that was the greatest, one of the greatest worked angles in the history of uh, of the business. Right. Yeah. Um. So the other things that happened, um, we had uh, some title changes, um. ABC, which is Ace Austin and Chris Bay, won the tag team titles from Brian Myers and Eddie Edwards. So they're a decent team. Uh, PCO became a champion again. They defeated uh, Top Dollar for the TNA Digital Media and Canadian International Heavyweight Championship. And afterwards, uh, the girl, um, I think she's Australian or New Zealand, Steph Delander, she came out and proposed to uh, PCO and he said, We. They're getting married. 
Well, it can't be legit because she's like <laughs> late twenties. <20s. laughs> fair play to him, but it's like I, I do think it must be some sort of an angle for DNA, but you never know. Possibly. Um, so the big one was the um, oh, Katia bloke. He's just uh, buried it. She's engaged to some other wrestler in real life. Well, there we go. <laughs> oh, okay. It's all. Um, it's all the work. So the big match uh, was the uh, six-man match for the uh, TNA World Everweight title. Uh, I can't name all the uh, in participants, but some of the main ones was Joe Hendry, uh, Nick Nemeth, Dove Sigler for WWE fans, and Moose, who was the champion. Uh, Joe Hendry eliminated Moose during a match, and then Nick Nemeth went on to become the TNA World Champion. Okay. So this is kind of divided the fan base they all agreed that it was time for moose to drop the title he is the top heel in the company but it's like he's been champion for a bit now yeah he, people obviously likes and respects nick nemeth because he's been in the business for a while but at the same time joe hendry's so over at the minute not just in tna but with his appearances in nxt his song's gone viral some fans is like if you ain't gonna put the title on him now then when so What's your thoughts? Do you put the title on a more established name like Nick Nemeth, or do you go with the guy who's the most over person in the company? You had the guy who was the most over in the company chase chase the title with a hell of a worker like Nick Nemeth. That's the angle that's going to draw the money. So do you turn Nick heel? Let him start being cocky with the title, because... I mean, for anyone watching him as Dove Sigler, he can pull it off. Yes, he can. If they were smart, you turn him heel and you have Joe Chase. There's always, the money is always with the baby face chasing the heel. That's where the money is. That's their night. If they were smart. And that's me not even watching the product, not even paying attention. If you're saying this, because I, I, I'm hearing this guy Joe Henry's name over and over and over again. Okay, he's got he's got the fans behind him. We got a new champion. Okay, let's build. See, this guy's built. We're gonna build up Nick Nemeth, and then they're gonna meet at the top. And that's how you build money. That's how you make money in this business. Mm. You know, Wednesday. Hey, when's their next schedule? Because Joe Henry, he's from the UK, Scotland. correct? Scotland. Yeah, Scotland. Okay. When's their next uh, tour over there? Do they have one planned? Fucking hell, that's a good question. I'm not sure. If they don't, they should. And that's where they should put them over. Yeah. And they'll draw it. They'll draw it. Because they drew a, they, for TNA, they drew a hell of a house, right? For that slam anniversary. Yeah, yeah. So that... There you go. And I know the guys. I Listen. I knew the guys who were hustling the tickets. I worked with both those guys. Uh, PCO hustled too. When it comes to French Canadians, they take their wrestling serious. And when it's business, they'll hustle. I knew the guys that were hustling the tickets. And I knew they were going to draw good. <laughs> and they did the right thing by putting PC over. They did the right thing by putting uh, Mike Bailey over. Uh, the next step for them is to build up their next big pay-per-view in Scotland. Nick Nemet champion, Joe Henry going in for the title. Cool. Uh, so, they've been getting some good buzz to you, Nate. They, since the change of management, I think that has been better, myself personally. Um, so, I've been, I, I can't say I've been watching every show religiously, but that's the same with WWE. I struggle to get the time, but I will check out clips and, like, keep an eye on what's happening but um, go ahead, go ahead. Um, now with the partnership with um, NXT because um, a few NXT wrestlers did um, wrestle last night such as uh, Regal's kid and his yep. group and okay. they actually allowed so in T T TNA they, um, they've got a tag team the Rascals and um, it used to be a free man then two of them went to uh, WWE uh -huh. They became a tag, but the one guy got fired because his ex-wife, that Kimberly, accused him of some shit. Ah, uh, yes. So, uh, Drake. Uh, so, he's went back to 
TNA now to tag with his old partner, but WWE they they allowed the other guy who's still in NXT to go over and tag with them against three NXT guys. Okay. So that's that cross promotion, and it's still early days. People's like, well, they're not sending over the champions. I'm like, it's still early days, and what you know, any exposure is better than no exposure, in my opinion. You know, regardless of my feelings on the son-in-law as a talent 20 years ago people change people's roles change he's no longer a talent he's an he's an administration he is the promoter he's a booker without even seeing him in that long just on the outside looking in seeing how he's doing things i think he's gonna make the wrestling business a whole heck of a lot better mm -hmm. his father-in-law was ruthless he was a genius a marketing genius he was a genius in the fact that he knew like a chess game he knew what players to put where and how to how to play you know what i mean like he knew Pat Patterson was the wrestling guy and guys like Jack Lanza. And he knew, okay, these guys, and he made mistakes along the way. You know, he got fucked over too but along the way. But overall, he built an empire. He made wrestling bigger than anybody ever thought he could, right? WWE is a household name around the world. Now that he's on the outs, I honestly think, and this is just me, that he is uh, he's concentrating on taking over the world with his, his BFF, Trump, and I think he's funding him with all the money that he liquidated from those stocks, okay? That's just me. That, yeah, that's just me, just my mindset. But as far as Hunter Hearst, uh, Monsieur Jean, uh, Monsieur Paul Levesque, who was broken in by Killer Kowalski, Walter Kowalski, I think he's going to do miracles. And he's going to bring professional wrestling to another level to where it benefits a lot more people. I can see him doing things that were unmanageable, like long-term health care for wrestlers, like a 401k for wrestlers, you know, retirement plan for, I can see him eventually doing this. And that's just me. Maybe I'm dreaming in Technicolor. I don't know. And I haven't seen the guy in 20 years. And, you know, uh, we haven't exactly had the greatest relationship. I always felt like there was animosity between us. And maybe he didn't like me because I was young and maybe a little naive. And, you know, but if, if I really go back and look at it, I was a 19 year old kid and he was a 31 year old kid. Now that I'm 40, I talk with 31 year olds and i'm thinking this guy's a kid yeah you know what I, I mean to be honest yeah i don't know if you agree i'm only speaking from experience the only time i started to actually grow up was when i became a father and there might have been similar for paul uh, triple h right like but okay, age, obviously never... as well but i think when you become a father as well you do mature a lot a lot of people said that about orton after he became a father he matured quite a lot right because i and knew you know orton. what orton was like yeah i knew the the little spoiled little fucking little bastard that he was before he had the kids you know and i wasn't around him when he had the kids but people do change with age yeah. um so do i i can't say that i was a saint i was probably a cocky little bastard too you know, I know what all little son of a bitch too when I was, you know, maybe I still have, but I have matured at the age of 40. 
since my father's passed away, I've had a complete change in mindset about a lot of things. And, uh, you know, because I have a lot more responsibility now. You know, I have a, 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 a very lucrative business to take care of now, you know. So I'm forced to mature and forced to grow up. But on the outside looking in, seeing the things that, Monsieur, I'm just gonna call him Monsieur Levac because that's his fucking name. The things he's doing, doing business with pro wrestling Noah. Uh, did I hear that Mara Fuji is supposed to be a part of SummerSlam as well? Yeah, a little brief story. So. Oh, yeah, freak out, freak out. You want to look macho like the macho man? You want to look cool? You want to look hip? You want to look funky like a monkey? You want to look like the Tower of Power? Get your Cafe Derenay merchandise. Oh yeah, dig it. <laughs>